Hi guys, I'm Chris. And I'm James. And welcome to The Better Out Than In. Today, we're actually doing a very special episode because we are recording in front of a live studio audience. I don't know if we've got the applause sign to go like applause or no, laugh. No, no, unfortunately we, we, we don't. We definitely don't. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know. It's we have. very much low key uh, <laughs> in terms of the audience. So no applauding, uh, no congratulating until we, we do like the... No booing thing. either, please. Yeah. <laughs> or, or any other not suitable for work kind of appropriate behavior. Yes, exactly. Uh, definitely no streaking allowed on camera. Uh, but today we are <laughs> recording <laughs> uh, one of my favourite Scotch whiskies. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this episode. This is the Monkey Shoulder Blended Malt Whiskey. Um, and it's actually named after, and, and this is going to be a very interesting tidbit, named after the, the colloquial body part afflicted from historically producing whiskey. So the Monkey Shoulder actually refers to the workers who would shovel tons of malted barley hours the, uh, after hours. Just, yep, absolutely. Uh, and that was the, you know, the long hours, um, often resulting in their arm hanging. So, uh, as you can imagine, if you're malting barley, there's a lot of water, a lot of malt. Um, well, and you do the impression. Oh, I'm not going to do the impression. But <laughs> one of the things that we actually uh, described in the uh, rye malt from Archie Rose was the fact that they had to bring in a lot of the bartenders to come and churn. Uh, yeah, that was once it was in the cast, churning around. Yeah. But this is before they get to have it, when it's still malting and then just throwing yeah. it over the shoulders. But it, it's still the same over. sort of no, manual labour process yeah. where, unfortunately, what that would result in is if you're you're sort of like digging up this this concrete-like substance that over yeah. and over and over again, it's uh, adverse effects. you would end up with a monkey shoulder because the monkey would be on your shoulder and so it would be heavier. And so that would, that would kind of drop. And that refers to that hopefully temporary affliction, but a lot in a lot of cases that, that actually became a permanent affliction. Um, you know, we have afflictions nowadays called RSI, where you're using a mouse and your wrist hurts a little bit. Uh, they actually had to go through maybe a lot more um, strenuous uh, afflictions, which led them to... <laughs> to those kind of issues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But supposedly it's not the only kind of animal named issue that they have, right? So they I've had, heard. Yeah, so there's at least three others that we know of. There's what's called the flower de toe, when you drop a cast on your foot, yes. and it basically destroys your foot or your toe. If you've ever caught a flounder, you would understand exactly what that looks like. It's a very flat fish. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I don't go fishing, but I get the impression. Yes, yeah. 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 or just drop a cast on your toe, and you'll, you'll find it exactly what a flounder looks like. Uh, that is actually surprisingly heavy. A than bit I thought it would heavier be. than a cast. No, but even that's fairly heavy. But that's actually <laughs> supposed to be very similar <laughs> to the lesser known called squid hand, ah. which is when you crash your hand, face thing. Or my personal favorite, the donkey face. <laughs> which is bit. the colloquial term for when you do nerve damage when one falls into a vat or a tub of fermenting mash. Good stuff. And How far are you falling through to like flatten your face? Uh, uh, well, okay. So let, let's like Jack that. Nicholson in kind of Batman kind of fall. Okay. I don't think you would be fully immersed, but if you're talking about... I'm sure your face needs to be. <laughs> no, but like you, you look at something that's been completely distilled right like even if it's like a, an irish whiskey triple distilled you are getting to the most uh raw pure form of alcohol no and it's got more uh, there yeah, true that's more to yes do with like but still you fall inside of that you are getting nerve damage my friend like that that there is no yeah escape but i think it. that's more like if you drink it you're gonna die slash nerve damage i don't know if this is more nerve damage because you smashed your face into something that feels like concrete mm, I, i'm pretty sure it would be the alcohol uh, content. Maybe. That, that would be my guess. I would love to hear from anyone who has who any, has one of these afflictions. Yes, has one of these afflictions. <laughs> How did you get it? Did you smash your face into concrete? A, or was it the alcohol? Supposedly this doesn't happen really anymore. anymore with modern techniques and stuff, so it's quite rare. Yes. Yeah. True, there is a bit more source so manual labor. All, but the, all the mash bills are basically put into like another it's like, a, still. It's a big it like, churns, machine that does it for you. Exactly. So, so yeah. this doesn't really happen anymore. It's a much safer... Having said Less that, I do know, and I won't go into detail, but there are a couple of very, very popular uh, distilleries yeah. that still churn by hand. So, That's a lot of the family ones in Scotland, right? Yes. Yeah, the family yeah. ones still so, do it, but I still probably don't know if they do it to the extent of what they would have done 50, 200 years ago when they got the old chimp monkey shoulder. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I don't know. If anyone sees the video who knows I'd like to know. who has it, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> just let, let me know. Uh, okay, so this is blended from uh, malt scotch, uh, therefore malted barley, uh, which is uh, from actual different distilleries. Um, and uh, one of the world's first 
it uh, was blend the world's single first. most uh, original whiskies. Yeah? I think it was one of the. I think it was the world's first triple blend. I, I, I'd, I'd like to know that because it, well, that's it, what they claim. It, yeah, exactly. It'd be interesting. Right. Like in the eighteen hundreds, did there, was there no like uh, person who was blending triple uh, distilleries of their single malts? I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not going to go. But in the, terms the of statement. the. Uh, <laughs> The records, it basically says it was the first. Yeah. Um, and this one was launched in 2005, which, as I said, combined single malts from three different uh, distilleries. Uh, they're all space side distilleries, very uh, interesting. Especially if you tried the Monkey Shoulder as well, you wouldn't necessarily pick that they were space, space sides, right? right? But they're all from the William Grant ah, Corporation, yes. I think, is, what, is why that's how it works. Yeah, exactly. And there. that is that interesting part because yeah. it's not necessarily your quintessential space side. Uh, but they're all specifically coming out of the uh, the William Grant uh, distilleries there. They were the uh, the Balvany, the Glenfiddich, and the Kennedy. I'll be honest, I didn't even know Glenfiddich. I thought it was a standalone organization, family owned. So I didn't know yeah. it was part of William Grant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I suppose that's one of the interesting things about like the space side. We've, we've tried the Glen Parkers, we've tried the, Dal the Dalmores, you know, so it's a very interesting expression coming out of there. And but, it kind of suits the flavor profile. Like it's yeah. all fairy line, like it's not. Overly one way or the other, but it's also in, in and of itself, the I suppose the distilleries, if you want to call them uh, that, in in whole, are uh, very unique. Like they have their own unique expression. So definitely to, right. to bring in a blend of like three three of them, yeah, very, very very interesting. Well, they don't do those three anymore, though, right? The, no, nowadays, no, it's very very closely secret. guarded. Yes, yeah. So they actually keep it uh, a bit more of a secret. So back in the day, they used to share sort of who they were blending with. Now it's it's a very close guard, which is in most of like European countries. Very Europe. Yeah, it's, it's very it's very common. But that I think it's because now. they have a new distillery that's up and running, and it's reached the stage what they regard as matured. Mm -hmm. So you don't know which they don't want to tell you which distillery it's coming from. So they go, it's one yeah. of the ones that we own as part of the William Grant family, and it's well. See, I can see now, like when when you look back and you say, look, blend biscuits, they're delicious, they're fantastic, it's, it's really, really great, especially for the industry. Yeah. But in terms of it being like a proprietary secret, that to me seems a little bit uh, like, it's not unorthodox because it seems to be an interesting common, standard, yeah. but it seems to be like they're not being as forthright with the information as I, I would like, like, I would love to I would know where they come from. But that, that comes back to... When we did the Glen Monoch, yes, the Audi one, we have no idea what that is. It is a closely guarded secret that they have now in terms of the distilleries that they use. Uh, apparently, it still is a three-fold space side distillery. Yep. Uh, so exactly. they still it's use the triple blend. Yeah, triple blend of three different space sides. Uh, but uh, at this point in time, all we know is that they've chosen uh, different malts that have matured. In first fill ex bourbon cast, that's that's pretty much uh, all we know. Supposedly the rumor is that, so they let them age the appropriate amount of years with the, the various distilleries, and then they bring it in, and potentially it's only up to six months in the ex bourbon casks. So they do most the aging off, all right? Like, significant portion of aging off site at the usual distillery to make yeah. the Scotch whiskey, which kind of makes sense to me. And then they bring it in, and then they make it, they put it through the bourbon cask to kind of give it that. Well, we don't bourbon castle like right? they're yeah. sweet of vanilla, -y, so it kind of gives us that extra flavour through it. Yeah, and then it goes from there. Yeah, uh, I suppose uh, one of the things that I love, if you look at this without the the bottle in it, it kind of looks precarious. I was going to go kinky. <laughs> you can go with kinky. It does yeah. say carry me. There is a chain. yeah. It kind of looks uh, like mm. there is a cradle. Um, okay. One of the things that I will give it credit to is its marketing, and that's one thing that I try and do across different whiskies is when they have Lit. yeah uh, different marketing uh, ploys that sort of suck me in. I'm, I'm a sucker for it. Um, they have beautiful regal three monkeys on the front, yep. uh, and that is almost burnt into the glass. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, right? Uh, well, that's the three monkeys, but they aren't. They aren't those. Three no, monkeys. but that's what you think. That's why they have three monkeys, right? I would suggest yes. because of those three. Yeah, they they are. Yeah, not a bad bar in Sydney, by the way. The triple monkeys, uh, forty percent ABV, uh, and we have the standard seven hundred mils right here. Uh, one thing that James just pointed out is it does have the triple monkeys yeah, yeah, on. I didn't see that one before. The cork. It is a wooden topper. This is definitely cork. Cork. We were one hundred percent with a wooden topper, and that is just absolutely beautiful. Um, the first time we tried this, I. 
bought you a bottle many, many years ago. It was like many, a birthday many, gift or something. It was probably one of the first bottles that I'd actually tried at the monkey shop with it, in all honesty. Like, I'm pretty sure that yeah, was I think it was. Bottles. And the reason why was because I'm like, I want the bottle back when you're finished. Because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> exactly. I just like the three monkeys on it. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. It's an incredible bottle. And uh, I've made reference to um, the Rum Diaries uh, and how they use, you know, that different sort of... Um, uh, scripting and... Scripting and, and branding and everything, and everything yeah. over the top. Uh, this is sort of the same thing. It's not. It's not neatly cut. It's a little bit sort of scratchy. It makes it give it that uh, that personal old, feel, right? Old, yeah. world, old world feel is probably the best exactly, way to say, right? Exactly, exactly. And that. so that, that gives it heritage uh, well, as well. The other thing I didn't register about this was that it's almost considered a small batch. I don't, it, when usually we talk about small batch, you talk about only a bourbon or a very good whiskey. It turns yep. out a small batch. But this supposedly each kind of release is only made of 27 casks. Mm. Like 27 casks. So... That's still a lot of whiskey, yeah. but it's not in comparison to a lot of the other ones you see. No. So in some ways it is semi-regarded as to a whiskey small batch. Look, I've, I've just got to point out the fact that this little cradle that we've got here, that is incredible. Like, And on that? It, it seemed a lot tougher than it actually was. I, I yeah, you it, did make that look hard. I made I that look honest. very, very hard. <laughs> But it, that, like, that is beautiful. And they have multiple ones out there as well. Like, this isn't the only cradle that they have. They have a lot of different mini cradles for their different or uh, whiskeys. They have the Gorilla Shoulder Monkey, oh. which is. Oh, let me just bring the size. Bring it off camera. Is, this isn't the Gorilla one. I tried to hide that. But... So, the Gorilla Monkey Shoulder is referred to as a four and a half litre one, like the big one that this is, that we have the Jimmy Bean. So they just referred it as a gorilla because it's like the biggest of the monkeys, etc. Right? And I've got to say, and it has the same that cradle is, for it. I so think. far, the only cradle that I have seen that is for the standard seven hundred ml bottles. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a four a four point five liter one. And speaking of which, I'm going to serve it. <laughs> well, it's not that full, and it's very heavy. So move it off. Back a lot of glass, a lot of metal, a lot of still a fair bit of alcohol in it, like half a bottle. <laughs> yeah. No, but like even that for me is just it's it's exquisite. It's it's one of those things where it just captures your attention, it captures your imagination and everything. And you look at that and you think that is a that is a very um, sophisticated whiskey because they have gone to such detail in it. Well, that's how it's worked, right? Is that? I'm sorry, I was trying to sniff. It's you released in 2005, and they released in 2012 in the US. And within two years, because it's so popular, and part of it is the bottle. It was in short supply again. Mm-hmm. Then the Bartender International Magazine did a poll in 2016 and it was the trendiest whiskey out in the market. Then again, 2018, it is the highest seller in high-end sports bars, so it's replaced Johnny Walker. Yeah. So in terms of the smell, what you get, you, you definitely get that richness of, you know, oak, dark fruits like dates, raisins, they really come through. Uh, there's no there's no spice really on the nose. Um, so you're not very getting, gentle. Yeah, any yeah, cinnamon. You're not getting any, um, you know, talons from the wood. You're not getting any, um, you know, ginger or anything like that. It's, it's, I get the, the briefest bit of. To me, it's like honeyed oats. Mm-hmm. Like like if you had oats cereal, or like oats with honey on top. That's what it is with a little bit of spice of some sort. Yeah. See, I, I don't, don't, get, I don't spice. get any really? spice at all. No, I, I get okay. I get richness. I get that quintessential scotchy flavor that I really, really love and enjoy. You get the oakiness, the woodiness coming through. You get those dark fruits. You get that that really substantial, um, you know, hit. And that on the nose for me is just, it's it's beautiful. And, and it's probably one of the reasons why Monkey Shoulder is, is one of my personal favorites. So I definitely have a bias in this race. I, I'm not going to say it, that it I don't. It'd be nice to do this like a shivers or something because they're both very nice. They're both very nice. Nice. And, and and both very comparative as well, and yeah, they agreed, have right? only subtle differences. Like I'm pretty sure if we go down that path, Shivers will be a little bit more woody and oaky, and the Monkey Shop will be a little bit more fruity and, and sort of rich and dark. Because unlike some whiskeys where you can nose it, and if you breathe too deeply, it just overpowers you. Mm. This one doesn't as much. Like I went pretty deep on that a few times, like to try and get as much of it. I could, and it didn't really do it. But on the palate, it's very similar profile to on the nose. Mm. Probably a little less sweet. Not that it's hugely sweet. No, no you're right. A little less sweet. A little bit more spicy. Um, oh, that, it's now kind of oak cereal with nuts in it, to me, mm. or something. But it's got that undertone of, like, caramel. Like, it just sort of... that. That's, that's what is the flavour that's easing it out. 
But no, you're right. It's got that cerealness. Uh, Very much it. does. The maltedness. Yep, malt. And that, that's what, what you'd expect. Yeah, like that, that cereal yep. and malt, that, that really works out well together. Yep. Um, I've lost any spice that I had on the nose, which is just, it was just very underlying. I had spice on the palate, on the finish, it dissipates really quickly. Maybe it could be good for that. Yeah, I'm you, try you get you get a really nice sort of sweet finish to it. Mm. Really quite mellow. Yeah, you do notice the spice a bit on the palate, mm. but not as much on the, the finish. I miss it. I had the finish to me kind of equates to the nose, where it's. Just very gentle and subtle. I know you weren't getting the nose really too much at all. No. You get a little bit in the palate and then it blends out again or blurs out again. I'm just wondering sort of where that spice comes from on the palate. Like, is it the alcohol, but it's 40%? No, I it's, wouldn't expect too much spice. It's got to be something to do with the wood sharpness. To me. The blend. It must it's, have to do with the wood. It's definitely an alcohol thing. But yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's very beautiful. It's very smooth. Yeah. I, I just, I, I wish I had the, um, the... Uh, vocabulary to be able to describe what that that spice was because it, it's almost unique yeah you know, it's, it's not quite pepper no. it's not quite it's not even quite like a really intense citrus it's no. like a blend between the without being either way it doesn't feel like a blend either like usually you'd be able to say oh it's a little bit of this a little bit of that yeah. whereas kind yeah. of like the halfway point almost but without being either of them yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's almost like they're blended you know, a half a dozen different spices and, and put it into the one. And that's what gives it such character because it's so deep and it's so rich. Yeah. And so, you know, I'd love to revisit this a little bit later on, hopefully once my palate expands a little bit. But for yeah, right now... it more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right now, it's just, it's just pleasant. It's, it's such a nice, smooth, easy to drink, but deep whiskey, especially yeah, for the There's really a fair bit of depth, I think. And that's yeah. what I was about to say is that I've never been the biggest Scotch fan, hence why I got the Japanese whiskey originally. We've tried this, we've tried the Shivers with the uh, Rugby World Cup episodes. We've also tried the Dalmore and the Glen Farkas and the Glen Minoch. I'm finding I don't see value at the moment in Scotch. As in, for spending a 200, 250 buck, I'm not differentiating enough on the palate or enough nice flavor to something that's in the I don't know, let's go with the 40 to 60 or 40 to 70 dollar range. I'm finding the 40 to 70 dollar range meets my palate for what I'd like. Yeah. yeah. And and that would probably transcend through to like bourbons as well. What we're basically suggesting is that that hundred dollar mark is the point of diminishing returns for both whiskeys and bourbons because once you get Usually, to that point, right, yeah. you're getting everything that you want to experience yeah. at this level. But maybe as we continue to progress, maybe those higher levels we Potential. might we might but it's very nuanced at those higher levels. Yeah, like the bourbons are being pretty light and there aren't too many bourbons that are really expensive or they're very rare. And I don't think I'll ever pay for like a Pappy Van Winkle, which is like a thousand plus dollars in Belgium, yeah. right? Like, so, or, yeah, but you can easily get the scotches that are 200 bucks, 300 yeah, bucks. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll try them, yeah. Yeah, it's more effort, I think, to get a bourbon that's that. But yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, it does seem to be the point you said, like, diminishing returns, you hit like this for 100 bucks and then it's like, yeah, yeah. that, right? It's yeah, not very worth it. And, and something like this is, you know, if you can get it on special, about $50. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you see it out there, definitely. For me, that that's, uh, as, as I've been saying for a lot of weeks now, almost in a row, it's like, that's a win. Like, I can't see the negative in, especially the economics. The price point. Yeah, yeah of, of a bottle like that. It'd be good to try that against the Shivers. Because they're both probably around the same price point. I'd like to do that in the next rumble. But oh. anyway, that's all we have time for. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this episode uh we will see you next week for next week's episode so we'll see you then yes definitely see you guys see you. Bye. hey thanks for joining us at the better out than in remember if you like this video to like it share it and subscribe to our channel if you have any feedback or suggestions leave us a comment or drop us a line the better out than in supports the responsible service and consumption of alcohol if you or a friend would like any more information about this please visit drinkwise.org.au or your local alcohol support organization